Hey everyone, it's Lynn. Um, just want to check. So if you guys could let me know if the um, the microphone is letting you hear everything, that would be great. Um, so I am by myself tonight. I'm so sorry, but Pam is not feeling well. So she left me to my own devices. And I don't, <laughs> last time this happened, um, it, she she was fine. I think she was just with her family, um, but I had a guest, and tonight I wasn't able to do that. So, yay! I'm glad you can hear me. Thanks. Um, so it's just me. Um, we're still going to talk about books, and we're still going to talk about um, one patch one patch quilts, which um, I, you know, until we bring up this conversation. Yeah, I hope she gets better too, Joanne. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So everybody pray for Pam. Feel better, Pam. Yay. Anyway, um, so I miss her. I always am like, well, what am I going to talk about? So you guys have to talk to me more. So um, I'm going to have to uh, make sure I'm reading the comments and stuff. But what this co this conversation about these books came up and we were talking about all right, what is our next topic of books or whatever? And we said one patch books. And I was like, have I even made any of those? And um, the answer is I've made a couple of them. And I was surprised when I kind of started researching, pulling out some books, um, maybe how many I forgot were necessarily one batch books. So, um, hey, Australia. Um, I'm so glad we're your jam. Um, and hi, Cynthia and Joanne and Pascal. Ooh, I like that name, Pascal. Um, and Dana. Oh, I, Dana, why I double? Okay, so our first question is, why do I double bat for quilt shows? Um, the reason I double bat is because cotton gives me a stronger, cotton's a, a foundation. So when I double bat, I put backing down, my backing on my long arm down first, and then I put cotton, and then I put wool on top. And the reason I double bat is because the wool springs against the cotton, so it gives me, when I quilt, more dimension, whereas the cotton doesn't have that springiness that the wool does. So um, it gives me more dimension, and that's why I double bat. That's it. So... Right, Sharon, you're ahead of me, right. So this is one of those twister quilts um, that were really popular, I don't know, about 10 years ago or whatever. And I made two or three of them and they're actually a one patch quilt. Um, the technique wasn't a one patch, but when I started doing research on the books, I found out they were a one patch quilt. So um, I thought that was kind of interesting. The only other one patch quilt I think I've done, I've done like three of these. The only other one I think I've done is I've done a, a one block wonder. Oh, I should have hung that one up. Oh, I forgot about that one. But it's just a top. I haven't, um, uh, I haven't quilted it yet because, you know, it takes me forever to quilt stuff. Um, Linda, looking forward to this all week. Why do you double back quilts weigh a lot? Yeah, they do. They weigh more. They totally weigh more and they're thicker and they're harder to um, carry to do trunk shows because they're thicker. Yeah. The, and, and in comparison, I mean, when I say thicker, they're like this compared to this, you know, so it's not like it's huge amount, but it is double than what you're used to seeing. Yeah. So that's true. Oh, good. I'm glad I pronounced it right. <laughs> Yay me, because I usually get in trouble for not pronouncing things correctly. So, um, anyway. So, one block. But I forgot what site website we use and stuff and i didn't want to bug her anymore so i was like we will have one camera tonight that's how it is um 
Ooh, Dana, would one would double bat be unsuitable for hand quilt? Man, it would be hard to hand quilt through it. I think if you're a hand quilter, and I'm really not, but I do know how to do it, and I've talked to several people who do do it, you want to hand quilt through wool, which is like quilting through butter because it the needle just goes through it so well. Or I have a lot of people who quilt through polyester. Um, I know we used to quilt through cotton a lot, and I don't, you can still do that, but friends who I know who hand quilt have done that, and they say that um, it really, it just makes your hand tired faster because you are pushing it through a little bit more difficult. There's a little more push to get it through the quilt than with wool, there's not. Um, wool's the most expensive, well, it's not the most expensive bat. I think silk's the most expensive bat. Um, but wool is definitely probably preferred by most hand quilters that I know. And if you ask me, wool's my favorite bat. So anyway, so yeah, Dana. Uh, I wouldn't double bat through hand quilting. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I think you would be so tired by the time you um, did that. And really... My, because I'm a long armor, I'm looking to get that dimension, right? So, yeah, I think your arthritis would blow up if you did, you know, wool and and cotton. Um, that you, the dimension that you're getting with a hand quilting is not as important as dimension that you're getting with long arm or machine quilting. It's just... It has a different look to it. There's a different skill set. Um, I think you'd be really happy with just using wool to hand quilt. Um, you would still get that dimension without having to have that um, that base that the cotton gives me. There's a new product, and I talked to the Hobbs representative at mm, QuiltCon. When we were at QuiltCon, I ran into her, of course, at the Hobbs booth. You know, surprise, surprise. And Hobbs is a batting company. And she said they're doing a new blend with wool and cotton. And I haven't tried it yet. So, but I'm interested to see how that works. Um, I don't know that it would give me the look that I like with my double bat. Because Jane, you're right. What I get is that trapunto look without really doing trapunto. And I kind of, um, I like that. Yeah, it's kind of me, so. But it's what works best for you and, and, you know, what look you're going for, too. Right. So, and yes, you, Jane, I didn't see it was a question. I thought it was a statement. Yes, you do get a Trapunto look when you double that. Here's the key to the Trapunto look, though. Leave areas specifically unquilted. So you outline areas and then you quilt the heck out of outside of that outline. And then that wool springs up. Um, in the area that is not quilted. So that's where you get that kind of pop to it, um, if that helps and makes sense. We read autocorrect. <laughs> well, hello from England, Jeannie. All right. So I do want to talk about these books. Um, so this is the One Block Wonder. This was a really popular um, technique. Um Pascal, let me let me answer that. Is double batting warmer? I don't know. I'm assuming, yeah, it would be very much warmer. But all of the ones that I double bat are only hung on the wall because they're they're art quilts. Um, I've never double batted a um, a quilt that would be made for a bed or for. Um, so yeah, I just do it for. Um, art quilts and Joanne yeah I was real excited Hobbs told me about it and because I was like well I still need that base that the wool can kind of spring off of for the art quilts um, but she said it gives you the dimension in the back that you weren't getting with just the cotton and so it, I'm interested in it I need to get some she gave me a sample but it was you know 18 inches it wasn't big so it's like I need a bigger Sample to do a, you know, I want to invest in it and do a big quilt. So, anyway, so one patch, so one patch quilts for these books. 
um, are um, just using one unit. Like, for example, this is a tumbler unit. So it was just that one unit over and over again, and that's what makes the quilt. I think Pam was going to bring her clamshell quilt today and hang that, but that would be an example of one patch quilt. The hexes would be a example of one patch quilt. If you're just doing squares, that would be an example of one patch quilt. Um, these, uh, now the tumbler and the thimble, this book, oh, let me tell you, see, I need Pam here to keep me straight. I'm just telling y'all, it's sad. So this is One Patch Quilts by Pat Yemen. And I think this is one of the best books if you're interested in one patches that you need. And it's thin and it's not expensive. And Pam should have it in the links. She said she was going to do that. Um, but it just simply goes through a variety of one patches. And these were popular quilts that they would do. So, you know, squares are one patches, rectangles are one patches, the uh, equilateral triangles are one patches, tumblers, which to me is the very same thing as the thimble, but I think they're just looking at the size of it. Um, this is a uh, offset square, which honestly is what that is back there. That's an offset square. Um, and the way the fabric is placed is what makes it looks like it's tessellating. Um, so you can see that in here. That's that right there. Um, but I think these can make really dramatic looking quilts. Uh, this is a half, uh, half rectangle. This one is a fun patch. They call it the fun patch. Oh, I see. It's kind of a weird cut up rectangle a windmill. Um, and then, so what you're doing is you're just repeating the same shape over and over and over again. And of course, half square triangles. Um, this one I thought was cool. The kite. Isn't that one kind of cool? I think they can, yeah, they're they're generally scrappy or multicolored, but I think you can get some really, and of course, the hexes are definitely a one-patch quilt, and we've been doing hexes for, I mean, for hundreds of years, but the revival in the last 10, 15 years has been huge, and then this is half hexes, isn't that pretty, that, that rainbow kind of look? Um... And this is a twisted tumbler, so you can see it's kind of got this weird, like, diamond, squished diamond shape. Let's see how accurate I am. Squished diamond. What is that? It's a squished diamond. And then you've got the pen, oh, pentagon shape, um, which I think is kind of interesting. So this I just thought was a great, I mean, if you're looking for a basic one-patch quilt book, um, I don't know how much it is on Amazon, but the back of this says $12.95. I bet you could get it less expensive than that, only because um, it, it was printed by AQS, which they don't do books anymore. So, um, Oh, I started to talk about this and then quit. This is the One Block Wonder. This is the One Block Wonder Encore. They have the original One Block Wonder. This is an obsession. When people start doing these, you get obsessed by them and you look at fabric differently and you look at how fabric's gonna go together differently. So the basis for the one block wonder, it's the same shape and the shape is an equilateral um, triangle. And let me find the, which turns into a, a, Hexagon, right? Right? So these are these are six equilateral triangles that go together that make the hexagon, right? Okay. So, but what it does, what the one block wonder does that I think the other, 
the other one patch quilts don't this kind of takes one patch to the next level but what it does is all right when you're looking at fabric fabric has a repeat to it right um let me grab some and i can show you oh okay so here's a great example, right? So when I'm looking at fabric, fabric has a repeat to it. So, and that repeat can be whatever the designers determine the repeat is, right? So, you know, when you see um, a certain, this is butterfly fabric, when you see a certain butterfly, let's just use this purple butterfly. See how it repeats? This is a very small repeat, right? So the, when that butterfly repeats again, this is maybe, I don't know, 12 or 8 inches. But there are some fabrics that the repeat is 23 inches or 18 inches. This just happens to be really tight repeat, right? So you know that next to this butterfly, that green leaf is. See, next to that butterfly, the green leaf is. So the basics of the one block wonder is this. You buy so many yards of fabric, the exact same fabric, however many yards, but you buy enough yards um, that you get six repeats. Okay, so you have to look at each fabric differently to do one block wonder. And what you do is you say, okay, if this is the one I'm interested in, this is one repeat. This is another repeat. Okay, so I would do that to get six repeats, right? So once I get six repeats, and I think they 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 go in here with eight repeats too, but let's the basics is six. If I get six repeats, then what they have you do is they have you cut the fabric on that very line that you determine what the repeat is, right? So if you say you're doing it from this purple butterfly and you're going to do it right on the edge of that, you know, his little end of his body right there, you're going to cut that line. Then the next time you cut it, you're going to cut it right there. So you would cut your repeats specifically right on the same line. Then what you do is you stack those six repeats together and um, the book has you go through and actually pin it all so that the, so that this, you know, this antenna bug eye of this butterfly is exactly on top of this antenna butterfly on this guy, right? So you're stacking them up to where they're exactly the same all six times. And then what you do is you cut the equilateral triangle. You cut that. You cut that triangle through the whole set of six is cut with that equilateral triangle set on the top one so that when you cut it, you have six matching pieces of fabric from that one area of that pattern. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> so um i'm looking to make sure i'm making sense with y'all okay so once you've cut that and it's the six exact same then what you do is you use those six and you change them up so that they will look i'm trying to get a good picture in here so that they will match each other and it's what happens is it spins so that one um six stack of equilateral triangles then become i'm getting to the right page so that one stack see see they're having you cut the six right here so then when you do that you see how they all spin because the same little, you know, whatever image is, is here and here and here and here and here. See how that happens when you sew them together? So it creates a kaleidoscope. And you can create a kaleidoscope with any fabric whatsoever. 
whatever. And that's why these are kind of addictive in that you take what you would think is this innocuous like chicken in the book, this book, and this is the Encore book, the innocuous like chicken fabric that you're like, you know, y'all may love chickens. I personally don't. I don't like the chicken thing. So cutting them up and then spinning them would be would be like save that fabric for me. I have seen, honestly, I have seen fabric that I hate done in a one block wonder that I was like, oh my gosh, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I, I mean, and it's usually ugly fabric. <laughs> That you're like, who knew it could do that? It was so cool. Um, so to me, One Block Wonders is just this one patch. It was a great um, concept that this, uh, what's her name? Oh, Maxine Rosenthal and jo Joy Pelsman. Maxine Rosenthal and Joy Pelsman. This is the second book. I don't think I have the first book, but um, the first book's just called One Block Wonders. This is the second book. They both go through the same technique. This one actually gives you a couple more techniques. It shows you how to do some of these kind of like um, cube looking things to put in your quilt. But what do you want to do if you make a one block wonder? Y'all, they're so cool. If you make a one block wonder, what you want to do is you want to buy an extra repeat. Just buy an extra one. Trust me on this. Because you want to either put that on the back or buy enough where it'll be your border. And then people are like, wait a minute. I, I've seen some, this happen so many times. They're like, wait a minute. That is this? Like they're so, when these hang at quilt shows, I'm telling you, people are always standing in front of them. They're always trying to figure them out. They're studying in them going, what part of, this cool thing does this match to you? And what's neat is you and your friend can choose the exact same fabric. And I promise you, you will not have the same quilt. And the reason is you may cut a different place in the repeat. One, two, when you have those triangles, I can spin on either one, any one of those three choices. So it's always different. It's it's just a really cool. They are great, Teresa. I know they're just fabulous. They're really cool, um, and it it it's really good if you get. You do have to have a lot of fabric. I mean, to do it, you have to have. I think for for a twenty eight inch repeat, it's like I don't know four and a half yards or something like that. It's it's a lot of fabric. Oh, and I tell you what else I've seen him do this with is um, I've seen them do this with panels and actually mine is with a panel. I should, I should have gotten it out. I don't even know where it is. I know that's, that's really shocking. I don't know where a quilt is, but it's the top. Um, yes, it's machine pieced. Uh, Dana, you could do it hand piecing. There's nothing to say you couldn't do it hand piecing. It would be easy hand piecing, honestly. But way I did it was um, I didn't sew, I only sewed because I wanted to avoid wide seams. And I think this is the way the book tells you to do it too. But because I wanted to avoid wide seams, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I, I just, okay. Like it was just trauma with chickens. All right. It had to do with them waking me up in the middle of the night because the next door neighbors had chickens and. Um, it just wasn't a good night. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, so I'm not, and they kind of freak me out. They may be nice and everything, but they always stare at you like they're going to get me. I don't know. I'm just not a chicken fan. They freak me out a little. <laughs> I'm sorry, Angela. They really do. They freak me out a little. So, uh, what was I saying? P panels are fantastic with them. You should do, panels are great with these. Oh, to avoid Y seams, what you want to do is when you're sewing the hexi, what you want to do is instead of sewing both sides together, just sew half and then sew this half together and then treat that as a row when you place them. 
so that you can just, you, when you sew, so when you put them into, let me get to another page, when you start placing them on a wall, and that's the kind of fun part with the, with the things, when you start placing them on the wall, then you would sew them in rows with just half hexes together. And then, then you don't have any Y seams at all. None, none, which is nice. Not that you can't do Y seams. Y seams are not hard. And I think we talk about, did we talk about Y seams on the last episode or is it the one that's coming up? I don't know. I know we filmed it and we talked about them, but I don't remember if it's already came out or not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get confused what we talked about. Um, so yeah, so if you haven't done a one block wonder, a one block wonder is super duper fun and just buy fabric that you're like, my tip in picking out fabric is this for one block wonder, make sure that there's resting space in some of it. Like this one wouldn't be bad. Although I think the repeats a little close. But you don't want, notice how there's background, so there's blue in between space. That gives you resting space. Um, so don't, um, don't, it's easier. I just think it gives your eye more to look at if it's got like a, a background in it. But you can use fairly busy prints. You can use, just, I'm telling you, they're great. My other tip is this, if you choose to use a novelty print that has people on it, just be prepared that some of the equilateral triangles that you cut out could be of, could highlight parts of the body that um, you may not want to spend. <laughs> I'm just saying a friend of ours did. The reason we know this is so a friend of ours is a big Marvel comic fan, which, you know, Hey, the movie's coming out this weekend and it's three hours long. So anyway, she was doing this. Um, uh, uh, it had, you know, Thor and, and, and Spider-Man and, and, um, you know, the Hulk and all these things. And there was just, there were some, there were some, um, lower body, you know, um, parts of the images that had, it was in this, you know, was in the spin and I'm just, just, I, you can use it. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just be prepared for, you know, different parts of the bodies to be cut up and spinning. And you just may want to consider that. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man story. Yep, that's it. It was a Spider-Man crotch that got spun and it was like oh. <laughs> like because that's how the equilateral cuz you cut up you cut it in strips and then you cut each triangle. So there's no waste. That is nice about this. Even though you're buying a lot of yardage, there's no waste. You use every piece because that's what gives you the look. Anyway, so it's really cool. All right, the next book is I know Pam makes fun of me all the time. She's like, you don't cuss. You don't. I'm like, I just, I know. Look, I'm red. I'm literally just blushed red. I know. I'm sorry. Pam would be here making fun of me. Just FYI. You can all do that now. You can all now make fun of me. That's fine. <laughs> um, oh, I'll try to get you a picture. Did the I it has been referenced a few times. I know. All right. So the next one is quilt collection, and this is a one patch quilt. It's also, you know, I mean, some of these are the same because the one patches are the same. But what I liked about this book is it did have a couple other different ones that I hadn't thought of. Um, it got um into I'm gonna try to show you the ones that I hadn't thought of. Um It had this, um, uh, 
this clam shell. It's kind of a clam shell, but it, they call it an o OG. Right? So you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the four clam shells together. See, two facing out and then two facing in. So, um, but I thought that was cool. And then this is a different one patch that they didn't have in the other book. So it was kind of a flatter triangle um, or a, di a half diamond shaped, uh, which I thought was good. And then they had one in here called the coffin. I was like, okay. Um, but it was just like a different shape. Let me see if I can find it again. And I'm sorry I don't have the second camera. I have it set up. I just didn't know what, um, you know, I expected. And, you know, oh, oh, this is what we didn't talk about the other one. The apple core. Pam wants to do an apple core quilt. And I think she's going to do a, um, a Tuesday video with apple core quilts coming up. So um, I think she's got a tool she's going to show you all. Um, I'm probably not supposed to tell you that yet, but don't tell her. I don't think she watches this afterwards. I would just FYI, I watch all the ones later. She doesn't. I don't think she does. She's, she doesn't have time. She's busy. I know there was a coffin one in here, and I thought that was an interesting shape. I mean, I know why they called it that once I saw it, but I was like, I wouldn't have... Well, dead coming. Oh, maybe. I swear to you, I saw it today. So today, oh, let me talk about this while I'm looking for this shape. Um, so today I have been at our guild meeting. So our guild meeting is the last meeting of, or the last Friday of the month. So I actually attended a lecture this morning with Nancy Mahoney, who is, if you don't know her, she's probably, she's probably got over 300 published quilts. I mean, she is very prolific in quilting. She's been quilting for, uh, she said 30 years, but then she said, well, but I started in 1976 and I went, oh, I think it's been more than 30. I mean, math. <laughs> um, so this is called uh, Quilt Collection One Patch. Um, here's one of the shapes. See how it's kind of a elongated rectangle with kind of a point on each side, which that was a different shape than what we've seen in the other book, which I thought, you know, that's kind of got that teardrop looking. That could be, I think some of these one patch quilts can look very modern, very modern. Um, especially, you know, with just how you color them because you're just using that same shape and you're, you know, changing the, the fabric choices in it. It can look very modern. It can also look very old. Like to me, this is an older looking quilt. I mean, that's, that's a reproduction 1930s kind of look to it. Um, you know, and can be used for scrappy stuff. I think part of that is also, I, I can't believe I can't find this. I think part of that is also, we're just redoing what we've done for years. And these are one of those quilts that I will say, if you are doing a hand project, I think one patch is a good hand project. Either English paper piecing, which a lot of people enjoy with the hexes. I personally don't, but a lot of people do. Um, are very popular and I think it's because it's something we can take with us in our busy lives you know you can take it on the road you can you know take it to the doctor's office to the kids baseball games to the you know whatever um I cannot believe I can't find this is it in the other book oh maybe it was all right so I have two more books I was going to talk about I swear it was in this one though if, it, if I can't find it this time, then I'm just going to give up. All right. I think it's in the other book. Okay. 
So the other book I was going to talk about is this is one. She's a friend of ours. Her name's Mickey Dupree. We've talked about her a lot, but she really did come up with a neat technique with hexes. And she's the first person I think did it. And if not, she's definitely done it better than anybody else has. But she has this book and I think she's got more than one book. I think there's a couple of them called Peace Hexes. And it's a new tradition, English paper piecing. And I know I've said I'm not an English paper piecer. I know how to do it, but I don't enjoy it. But what I love about this book, um, <laughs> no, that's true, Jeannie. <laughs> like, I know that's in here. Where is it? Um, but what she's done with this is she's taken that shape, the hexy shape, and she has literally shown you how to add, how to piece that shape and then put it in, um, and put it in like different, uh, different hexi groups. And I, I'm just, it's so fun. So this book tells you how to do, um, it tells you how to do hexes and English paper piecing. Um, I've taken her class and it's, you can do it. What I love about this is what she's, what she then does is she says, okay, what I'm going to teach you to do is how to piece this. So this is a pieced hexi, this one little thing. And it's just the same color on each side and a stripe down the middle. And she shows you in this book how to do that. Right. And see, once you put that stripe down there, that totally changes this. I just think it's so cool. So she has gone through, I mean, this is full of ideas from spikes to, um, and she shows you how to do them, how to piece the little block before you put it with the hexi and what that'll turn out like. So these are cogs, right? And see how it just gives you, I just think it takes the hexes to the next level. It's just really cool. She's a wonderful teacher, friend, but a wonderful teacher also. I I keep, I've asked her a ton of times to join us on our stitch in and she's so busy. I, it's just hard to get on her schedule. Um, and then for us, it's just our schedules haven't met up yet. She swears she's going to do it and I'm going to hold her to it, holding her to it. So if you're watching Mickey, I still, it's still in my brain. But isn't this great? This is just, and I and I know there's another book. I just don't have the other book. Um, and it's just all these ideas of how you can change the look of that little hexy. It's brilliant. It just totally is brilliant. And they can just have totally different, and she's named them all. These are sparkle variations. And I like what, what she does in the book, which is brilliant too, is she's giving you not only, this is a, 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 a graphic diagram, but she shows it to you in a solids. And then she'll also show it to you what it would look like with some prints, um, which I think help people with visualization. I don't think everybody, you know, can always visualize what stuff will look like. And I just, I love it. They are so cool. So this is one of those books that I'm telling you. Oh, I had a friend get this book. And she loves Inger's paper piecing. And she's gone through this book. And she's literally tried absolutely every different um, type of, yeah, this is a tumbler. And she's done every different variety of how to do it that's been shown. And she's putting that in a quilt. She's not done with it yet. Ooh, I like these. Look at these. Those little spikes, aren't those cute? Yeah, this is just, it's just really cool how she's figured this out. That's very neat. So, and I will tell you what too, I'm going to give Mickey a ton of praise. I think she, her quilt color, what she puts in quilts, I've admired her, how she puts colors together for a long time. She really just has a knack. A natural eye with prints and color combinations. She's one of my, I just, I like 
looking at her quilts and just seeing the variety of what she pulls out in it's an it's enjoying to look at the colors that she puts in a quilt and the combinations and i think they're very fresh and i just enjoy her stuff um i think her and karen karen stone are two of my favorites so um the last book that I have, well, I have one more that I can talk about, but it's not necessarily just one patch. Um, but this is the last book that I picked up today. Um, you know what? We are so blessed. And I know that because I live, you know, close to a great guild and, you know, got to hear Nancy Mahoney lecture today. But also, I went to the library in the guild and I said, you know, we're supposed to talk about one patch quilts today or tonight in the show. And I just don't know that I have any. And I'm telling you, those ladies were like, well, here, let's do these. Um, so the, this is another one that I picked up at the guild. That's a library book that we had. It's called All Points Patchwork. Um, it's not strictly a one patch. Um, but it, it, it's, it, it's a little bit similar to a one patch. Um, and some of these I would definitely consider because it, it references, you know, the hexes, but it's another way to kind of look at some of these. Maybe this is the one that has the, oh, this could be the one that has the coffin in it. Am I excited about a coffin? That's what's funny. Oh, uh. Da, 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 da. Oh, come on. Please be it. I know it's here. See, this was, oh, this is what I liked about it. So it's like making patterns with curved, these are with curved shapes, but those are just apple cores. That's all apple cores. That's all that is. And it just lets you see how you can have different ones. This is just um, clamshells right? These are just clamshells. That's clamshells. That's clamshells. So I really think these one patch quilts can be very um, attractive, very interesting, very um, dynamic. Here it is. No. Dang it. I, was, I thought it was there. So the back of this one has all of these just one patch you know, kind of diagrams of what you can do with one patches. Uh, and I really like this one. This one is, let me see when it was published. This is a nice book. Like I want to own this book now. And I did rent it from our library. 2005, Diane Gilliland um, did it. And all points, patchwork, English paper piecing, beyond the hexagon. So what she's done is, you know, she's showing you how to do all of these in English paper piecing so you don't have to just do hexes. Uh, we've all known that for a while. And if you are a big English paper piecing person, um, man, if I can't find this coffin thing, I'm going to be upset at myself. I did look at this today. Um, paper pieces. I think it's paperpieces.com. You can order any pre-cut shapes um, for different sizes of hexes and stuff like that. And they have everything from, you know, like diamond shapes to uh, the hexy shapes and all the things that kind of go in between them. Like these are all diamonds. That's all diamonds. It's just how you arrange them. That's why I think really these one patches can lend themselves so well to a modern aesthetic as well as um, even though they're very much an older technique and they're, uh, you know, you can find older quilts with this in it all the time, but I love this. Look, these are all diamonds and it just gives you so much like really the Lone Star that's a big old diamond shapes. It's just doing the same thing over and over again. This is what I've never made this. This is on my bucket list of quilts to make. This block is called Seven Sisters. This block is called the Seven Sisters. And there's a, 
I think it was popular in Tennessee or Kentucky is where it was kind of developed in the 1800s. Um, I may be wrong on that, so don't quote me on it. Like, I don't want to get in trouble with people and be like, she's wrong. Um, but I'm pretty sure it came from that. It came from the South. But I just love that. I just love that Seven Sisters block. Isn't that neat? But I do think, I do think, even though I'm not an English paper piecer, I would do this by hand, and I think it would be easy to do. The reason that this is a harder one to do by machine is because you have all those Y seams. Once you make the star, you've got to put these diamonds in between those two points of the star, and that is going to be a Y seam there. And that's so much easier to do hand piecing than um, another one. So, tell me this salon. So, are there any questions? Um, yeah, hexes can be. Well, I think all of these one batches are much more diverse than we realize. You know, I think it's just us breaking down and looking at you know, what we do and saying that is, oh, it's not, I swear to you, it was in here today and it's not. These are transforming octagons. Look at that. This is a great book. Like I need to buy this book and have it for myself. Even though I don't do paper piecing, I think it's got a lot of good like shapes and designs that are interesting. Well, I don't know where it is. I'm telling you, there was one shape they called a coffin. And it was a, um, it was a, like, uh, a rectangle type, but the bottom kind of went in like this. So it was like this. And then the top kind of went up in like this, but had a flat top. So that was what it looked like. And I thought, well, I haven't seen that before. And I thought it was interesting. So, anyway. All right. Oh, and then the last book I was going to show you all, and I bought this one from Nancy because she has a quilt in it, but this is from Martingale. It's a newer book from Martingale, and um, it's 101 small quilts, and some of these small quilts are, are one patch. Not all of them by any stretch of the imagination, but some of them were one patch. I mean, honestly, y'all, that's a one patch quilt. Rail fence, one patch quilt. And that's dynamic. You know, I know it's like reproduction type fabric and stuff. But that's kind of, I mean, that'd be a cute little. And you could look like this is woven too. Because if you use the same fabric here and here, doesn't that look like it goes underneath that? And it gives you a woven look to it. It's all in fabric placement at that point. All in fabric placement. Yeah, Frida, I completely agree with you. If some of these, unless you want it scrappy, 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 fabric placement is going to be a key for one patch quilts. And there's nothing wrong with scrappy, scrappy, scrappy. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're wanting it to have a very much modern aesthetic, I would definitely plan out either with graph paper or on, you know, some kind of, uh, computer program where you can, you know, color in the areas that you want it to be or have a design wall. Design wall is always good. Um, I don't know what I'd do without my design wall. I really don't. It's one of my most used tools. I, I love my design wall. And mine, y'all, this design wall, I'm telling you, I got it from the dollar store. And all I did was, you know, you can go to the dollar store, or Walmart or wherever and get the foam core board. That's, you know, kind of got a squishiness, but it's cardboard on both sides. All right. So I did that and I got enough. I measured this and then I got enough sheets that it would, you know, fit in that space. So this is all just that same core board. And then what I did is I went and got the 3M tape. And I got the one with Velcro on it, right? 
So I put one side of the Velcro on the back of the foam core and I left the other side attached to it and I peeled off the stuff. And then when I, and I started at the bottom and I just kept, and I put one piece to the wall I put like four pieces of Velcro on it and I put it to the wall, smoothed it out, held it for however long the 3M thing says you have to have, I don't know, 30 seconds or whatever. And then I did the next piece and butted it up next to it. And I continued to do that through all to put all of that on there so I can put pins in it. It doesn't damage my wall because it's 3M tape. So when I pull it off my wall, I just have to pull that, uh, that piece of plastic thing that they have that's got the sticky stuff on it. Then I took white flannel, cheap white flannel that you buy at a box store, and I sewed it together. I cut it and sewed it together that it was big enough to cover the whole thing. And because it's foam core on the sides, I just pinned the sides. So there's pins going in this way on the top. See the top there and the sides right there. There are pins that go down and in on the sides so that it stretched out. And I did that from the top down so that it stretched out my um, flannel. So I can put a block up there without any pins in it, or like this is fully quilted. It's a little um, table runner that I have. It's actually a hot pad. I've told you all this. Um, and I can pin it up there and it just, it's great. It's awesome and super easy to make. It was not expensive. And I think the most expensive thing was I mean, I didn't buy a ton of flannel, so that wasn't that bad. But the 3M tape with the Velcro, you know, 20 bucks or something to get all this, the pieces that I need. Because I needed like, I put four or five on each one so that I know it would stay up there. And this has been up here six years. So no problem. Six years. Oh, yeah, Cynthia, I think that's true. I think one patch scrappy quilts are exactly what a lot of grandmothers and a lot of quilters before us did. And I think it was a way to, um, I, you know, I can't say that, I, you know, we are exactly like our ancestors, but I think we are going to have tendencies like them. And my tendency is not to be still. I just have to be doing stuff all the time. And... I know that they're going to be like, you know, so I think my great grandmother would have been sewing all the time, you know, or doing something, you know, so I just, I, I, I like that. Yeah, it, uh, Cynthia, it's lasted six years. It's not a, I mean, it's a really easy technique to do it. And um, I've not felt it pulled away at all. I have pulled, pin full quilted quilts up there. Um, and you have to pin those only because they're so heavy with the batting and backing and stuff. Um, but yeah, I put all sorts of stuff up there and just, you know, arrange stuff or mess with stuff or, you know, test stuff out. But a design wall is definitely one of my favorite um, tools and easy, not hard to create. And when you're doing that poster board, the core board, it makes sure it's got the squishy stuff in the middle of it. The core board, what's nice about that is then it can be as big as my wall is or as small as my wall is. Or, you know, this is almost to the ceiling here. You can't see the ceiling, but it's not mm, maybe six inches, eight inches. I probably could have taken it to the ceiling because you can cut it to however many size you need it, you know. So... Oh, yeah, I bet that was beautiful, Robin. I've made a tumbler. My one block quilts, one patch quilts have been, I've done a tumbler. I've done three of these. Three of these, four of these. Maybe four of these. Three. Three. Now four. <laughs> I've, I'm trying to remember which ones I've given away. I did one for my sister that I gave her, which I did um, out of a... A Christmas 
uh, layer cake, which she liked. Um, and um, I've done the the tumbler or the twister ones, and I've done uh, a tumbler. I've done a tumbler, and I liked that. I used all. I used um, uh, Jelly Roll to do it because I just cut the tumbler out of sewn strips of Jelly Roll. And then I've done a One Block Wonder, which I enjoyed. Um, I like doing it. I love the technique. I just haven't had time to do another one. And I, to me, those are so... Uh, in this way my brain works, they're so beautiful. I don't want to use them. I know that's weird. I probably very weird. So, yeah, Frida, what I like about this, I know I'm jumping back in conversation, but what I like about this is I was able to stretch the flannel so that there are no wrinkles in it and just pin it. And it's, I've not had a problem with it at all. Um, I could probably restretch the flannel a little bit, but yeah, it works great. It's got thread all over it. <laughs> you can't see it, but it's got, I don't think you can see it, but there's tons of little threads all over it. It's well used. It's well used. That's definitely for sure. And if I'm laying out a quilt, especially with one of our patterns, you know, that's where I put my blocks, where I'm going to sew them together, or where I put, you know, to arrange them or whatever, you know. And it lets me get with when it's up on a wall, it lets me get away from it. Um, and the other thing too is you want to be able to step back from it or you want to leave stuff up there so that you can walk away from it and come in the next morning and go, oh, does that what is that still look good that I thought it did last night or whatever? So <laughs> home supply store tomorrow. Yes. I've got to go to the home supply store because I need to block a quilt when I'm done quilting it, which is still the worst idea I've ever had. Um, I should probably, I, I don't want to move the computer to show you all, but I'll take a picture and post um, where I am with it. But the, the caterpillars, he's starting to emerge. So I'm doing, and if you don't know, so I'm doing a uh, second, you guys know I did an Alice in Wonderland quilt a couple years ago that was in our guild show. So I'm doing a second Alice in Wonderland quilt. Um, and this scene is from the caterpillar scene where Alice is looking over the mushroom and he's saying, who are you? And she says something to the effect of, I knew who I was this morning, but I've changed a few times since then, um, which I think is kind of cool. And, and for me, um, I called it identity. And the reason I called it identity, a lot of my art quilts are very personal. It's a personal journey for me. Um, but I called it identity because for me, it was um, digging through scripture and, and seeing what God says about me. And then I've quilted in little, little hidden in the butterflies of, you know, positive I am statements. So it's, it's been a good journey and there's a lot of butterflies though, so, you know, so I think it's kind of a cool, it's a very personal quilt, but I, I'm, I'm going to be glad when it's done. It's still the worst idea I've ever had just because um, of the time crunch that I have right now to get it done. But it's, it's, it's a, I'm liking it. Like I'm, I'm starting to fall in love with it a little bit. Like I've gone through the, I've gone through the stage of, it's a great idea. I love it. And then there's, okay, this can be a little hard. And then there's, um, you know, okay, this is really like the worst idea I've ever had. Who thought of this? Like I'm that stage still, but I don't know. It's become you know, talking about it more and working on it more has become more personal. So I think by the time I get it done, it will be, it will be the most difficult quilt of thread painting and stuff I've ever attempted. So there's going to be a lot of just blood. And I think it's going to take me 300 hours to get this done. <laughs> just quilt. It's a, and it's a whole cloth. So well, we'll see. And we'll see what the judges think. You know, who knows? <laughs> so, yeah. It, so I'll, I'll post it. I'm trying 
So I know, I know one of the judges that'll judge this quilt, I think he follows us, but I don't think he watches all our videos. So I don't want to post a ton of pictures because I really want, if he's the one who judges it, I want his um, honest opinion not to know it's mine. I mean, they'll cover it up and the name will be covered up and everything, but I, I, you know, I still want it to be blind. I don't want him to know. So anyway, so I'm not, I'll probably post a lot more pictures of it after the show. So you'll get more in June than you do before that, because I'm kind of keeping it close to the vest a little bit now. So you've seen a few, but I won't post very many till after the show. And then I'll post a bunch. So that's why I'm not posting a ton of it. And it's, it's not that it's a major secret. It's just, I know, I just, I know we have fans and I know people follow us and I know he's a judge or they're a judge and I don't want, I just don't want to influence that at all. I want it to be honest. So, uh, so anyway, anyway, there it is. Oh my gosh, y'all, it's eight o'clock. I've talked for an hour without Pam. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> so, all right, well, here we go. I'm sorry we missed Pam. I miss Pam. I, you know, and she'll feel better soon, I'm sure. Um, but so if y'all are going to see uh, Marvel, have fun. I haven't booked my tickets yet. Um, so I hope to go soon. <laughs> I have to talk my my husband wants to go. It's just we haven't had a chance to schedule it. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, hope you all had a great time and got some good ideas. And thanks for watching Stitch. We love having y'all and we love talking to y'all. So um, we'll make uh, Pam join us next time. Make sure she's better. And y'all have a good evening. Great weekend. Talk to you later.